Hello, I'm Sarah Lee Gallifrey Ravenclaw. So this is another new topic on my channel, Eurovision. So I've been watching Eurovision so long I remember when the UK entry was plane themed. Yes, I mean these guys, Scooch in 2007. So I've been watching it a while. But we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about a song that went viral earlier this year. This song that is hopefully playing in the background now. I'm going to keep talking over it in the hope that that avoids some copyright. Freaks, sung by Jordan Clark. Written by John Maguire, Rick Parkhouse, Corey Sanders and George Tizard. So the title of this video probably gave it away, but where did this song come from? So if you're not from the UK or not a Eurovision fan, then let me educate you on its story. So, let me take you back to 2019, specifically 7.30pm on Friday the 8th of February, when on BBC Two, a programme presented by Mel Gedroich and Mans Zemelo, yes, the guy who won for Sweden in 2015 with Heroes, he since moved to the UK and still lives here with his wife and children, and it was called Eurovision You Decide. It was the fourth and, at time of recording, final series of it, although there have been other versions over the years. If you're interested in the names of all of those, I'll put the Wikipedia page in the description, but you don't want to watch me sit here for five minutes and read you all the different names from all the years. That would take forever. So, to get back on topic, this series was done differently to the previous ones. Instead of each artist having the song written specifically for them, they would written three songs for the programme and the six artists, five soloists and one group, had each been allocated a song. So two artists had been allocated each of the three songs. And then they did a song off, which was each artist performs competing against the other artist with the same song. And then those three finalists went through to a public vote. This was all during the hour and a half live show. So it was quite quick and obviously that enabled us to all vote. Once they knew which three people were up for the public vote, then they obviously opened the vote and then there were some guest performances um, to kill the time while we were voting, which included Suri, the entry from the previous year, and from Mans himself. If I remember correctly, you could vote both online and by phone, as that is how the BBC usually do it. That's certainly what they've done for a number of years for Strictly Come Dancing, which if you're not from the UK, that is the Dancing with the Stars, is what the international versions are called. It's the same show. So who were the artists and what were the results? If you want to watch the performances of the artists before I tell you who won each heat, the links are in the description. I hope those clips are available internationally. Do let me know in the comments if they're not, and I'll see if I can find some other ones and link those as well. But... The clips are there, there's all three song offs, so go and watch those first if you want to see them before I tell you about them. So I'll be honest, I do not remember the order the song offs were in, so this is my order. If you can find the order that they were in, then it probably does differ because this is just the order I've picked to do them in. So we'll start with the song Sweet Lies, written by Maria Broberg, Lise Cabell, and Esben Svane. The two artists who competed for performing this song were Carrie Ann and Anissa, and Carrie Ann was picked by the panel to go through to the public vote. Then, Bigger Than Us, which was written by Laurel Barker, Anna Clara Follin, John Lundvik, and Jonas Thander. And this one was Michael Rice versus Holly Tandy, and the panel chose Michael. And then that is the song that was taken to Eurovision that year with Michael. And then the song we're here talking about, Freaks which was Jordan Clark versus Maid, which was a female trio. And Jordan was the one chosen by the panel. So now it went up to the public vote. So if you've seen the clips in the description, again, you can go and view those now before I continue, then at the beginning of those, you know, each artist introduced themselves. Now this is where the question that many of you may be wondering, and the reason you're here, is why didn't Jordan win? This is where my theory for that comes in. This is just my personal suggestion. It's no hate to Michael or any of the other contestants. It's just my theory on what happened that night. So from those intros, you know that Holly competed 
in X Factor in 2017 where she got to the quarterfinals and finished 7th. Carrie-Anne didn't mention it but has also appeared on X Factor in 2015 where she reached judges' houses but didn't make it to the live show. Jordan Clark also didn't mention it but got to the final of Britain's Got Talent in 2013 as part of a band called Luminites. And Michael Rice mentioned that he'd been on a show the previous year called All Together Now. The series of All Together Now he was on was the first ever series which ran from January to March 2018. So at the time of this Eurovision You Decide, Series 2, which ended up being the final series, had not yet started as it didn't start till that March. So not only was he the reigning champion, but at the time he was the only winner of it. There is one more key thing about the shows I mentioned. X Factor, Britain's Got Talent and All Together Now. All Together Now is the only one of those three that is BBC. And Eurovision and Eurovision You Decide are BBC, not ITV. So I assume I don't need to explain what Britain's Got Talent and X Factor are. They've both had countless international versions. But I don't know whether All Together Now did. So a quick sum up if you've never seen it. If you watched it, feel free to skip ahead a bit. The premise of All Together Now, the contestants would go up and perform in front of this giant grid full of the hundred, a hundred experts from the musical industry with the celebrity one in the middle being Jerry, who's Ginger Spice from the Spice Girls. And if the expert liked your song, they'd press the button in front of them, their box would light up in gold and they'd stand up and join in. Hence the name all together now, because if everyone pressed it, you by the end would have 101 people singing the song. So you got then a number of points out of 100 based on how many people have pressed their button. And then they did a few episodes of Heats and then the top scorer and a few highest scoring runners up went through to a final and then did the whole process again and Michael got the top score. So Michael had just won that the year before. So out of the six, four had appeared on previous talent shows but Michael was the only one who it was a BBC talent show and it was also the most recent of the others. So this is where my theory comes in. Certainly in my household, this is what happened. My mum and brother both voted Michael because of All Together. We'd watched him on that, they'd liked him, they'd wanted him to win then. So they voted for him again because they liked him from that. Whereas I was voting for Jordan because I thought it was the better song and he was a good performer. I still stand by that. I voted Jordan for a reason. I voted Jordan because I thought it was a better song and he also had the stage performance. I'm not saying Michael didn't. They both had great stage performance, but personally, I preferred Jordan's song. The BBC don't tend to announce the voting percentages afterwards, and this was no exception. So I have no idea how close it was between them. But it is possible there were enough other people around the country with the same logic as my mum and brother who voted for Michael for that reason. This is a regular thing in the UK. I don't know about other countries. But when you have people on Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing on Ice or I'm a Celebrity, they do tend to do better if they are from that one. Your BBC people are more likely to get to the final of Strictly Come Dancing because people who watch BBC programmes know who they are because they watch BBC programmes. ITV people are more likely to get to the final of Dancing on Ice or I'm a Celebrity because people who watch ITV programmes know who they are. I could find you countless news articles of people complaining that those shows are fixed because the finalists are all people who work for that channel. But it's the simple logic of people who watch that channel watch that channel. So of course they're going to vote for the people who they know. So I believe that may have been the reason why Michael beat Jordan. I think they were both equally good, but I think that may have been how he tipped it because he was a known face on the BBC, having just won a BBC talent show less than a year earlier. So I'm not hating on Michael. We have no way of knowing if Jordan would have done better. Maybe he'd have done worse. But I said this was the final series of Eurovision You Decide as of current. They have decided it internally with the help of a music company, which did actually somewhat change the way they've done it. If you look at the UK statistics in Eurovision, we haven't done very well in a while. We last won in 1997. 
I wasn't born, my big brother wasn't born, so it's been a while. But programmes like Eurovision You Decide tended to be more about giving someone their big break, a bit like All Together Now did as well, of you have nobodies competing for their big break. Whereas more recently they've actually sent people who have albums, have a music career, are faces that are known at least in the UK, if not internationally, they are someone who we're aware of, they're not a nobody who's just won a talent show. One answer I don't have is what happened earlier this year to make this song go viral? Lots of countries have week-long selection processes where they do it with all this voting. This was one hour and a half show in 2019. How has one of the songs from this gone viral nearly five years later? I suspect it was something on social media. I'm not on much social media, but I know that there are a number of songs in the last few years that didn't do very well on the night and then six months later were massive because of they were a TikTok trend or something like that. And I do believe Freaks became a song you could use for a trend on TikTok. I don't have TikTok. And I do believe Freaks became a soundbite or whatever you call it on TikTok that people used for videos. So was that where it started or was that after it went viral? So if anyone knows the answer to that, I don't have TikTok personally, so I don't know which order this happened in. But you can tell how big it's got in the last few years if you just look at the YouTube numbers. Obviously, I don't know how this has grown. If you look, could look at my personal ones, you'd see I've probably watched it on average monthly for the last five years. I was a massive fan of this song and I keep going back to it randomly. But Jordan Clark's Freaks has 548,000 views. Michael Rice's Bigger Than Us has 443,000 views which was obviously the selected song, so should statistically have more. So if anyone can educate me on how that happened, whether it became a TikTok trend and that's how it got popular, or it became a TikTok trend after it became popular, and you know what caused this resurgence, I'd be interested to read that, so please leave that down in the comments. As well as, if you had heard of this song before this year, what country you're from, and so if you watch Eurovision or not usually. If this was the UK entry this year, would you be voting for it? Where do you think it would come? It's obviously all hypothetical. The song has to have been written within the last year, so Freaks can never be entered into Eurovision. But it's one of those songs that lots of people from countries outside of Europe, certainly, won't know where it came from. It's not even a Eurovision song. It's a nearly Eurovision song as per the title of this video. So the timing of this video isn't accidental. The semi-finals start in a few days and then the finals next week. So if you've never watched Eurovision before but you enjoyed this song, this is the sort of songs you get at Eurovision. So watch it and maybe you'll get a new favourite. Feel free to leave all your thoughts about this year's Eurovision and freaks down in the comments who you think will win this year and who you're supporting. Obviously, if you just put something like, I'm supporting my home country, do specify where you're from. But other than that, enjoy Eurovision this year and see you soon. Bye.